Hello and welcome to our Underwriting Innovation Insight Series. Today we have Angela Bolduc, Principal and Managing Director of Milliman and Telescript, to talk to us about everything Milliman. So Angela, we have all experienced FOMO, or the fear of missing out at some point in our life. I know I hear it as the reason my husband has to be back to watch, well, all things sports related. Um, Milliman has coined the term FOMA to describe an underwriter's fear of missing, well, anything. And we know we hear this a lot from our underwriters when they're trying to use alternative evidence versus traditional evidence. Whether it's because we can receive codes that show that a lab was ordered but we have no lab results, or we just have a code that alerts the fact that someone was billed for a condition but we don't have enough to actually underwrite the case. Angela, can you tell me a little bit about how Milliman helps underwriters with FOMA? Yeah, thanks uh, for recognizing our marketing campaign. Um, we really thought it rings true because, as you said, everybody uh, in risk assessment doesn't want to miss anything. And I think Milliman is really well positioned because not only are we going after all forms of electronic data, um, but we can have that interpretation so that we can really understand some of the subtleties and nuances that come from the different pieces of data. So obviously we started with prescription histories and being able to see kind of what drugs you're on, which we can infer what conditions you may have, but then adding medical data where it would actually have conditions and diagnoses and severity of those conditions and then how those interplay. So for example, diabetes, you know the person's not only diagnosed with diabetes, but we can see first it was administered with prescriptions and then it switched to insulin and then we can see how the dosage is changing over time. So we can see how stable are they from a diabetic standpoint. And so I think Millman does a really good job of being able to bring in that data. It's all electronic data, instantly available, with that interpretation and also the risk score that gives some unintuitive interpretations to try to really help understand what's going on and doing that all in an automated way so that we can still achieve our goals of automation and things moving faster and more efficient and better experiences for our consumers, but yet still not missing key risks that we all need to know so that we can make sure this whole insurance industry is sustainable. Absolutely, that's fantastic. You know, speaking of missing anything, with increased automation and underwriting um, comes that increased opportunity for missed information and possible misrepresentation. We all know it, right? So because of this, forensic underwriting has really become a hot topic. And I know this can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But in my mind, forensic underwriting is using third-party data, um, post issue to verify that all underwriting material information was obtained at the time of the application. And I think many use things like post issue audits, um, but Milliman has a unique uh, offering. And can you talk a little bit about how Milliman can help with forensic um, underwriting? Yeah, I think it's been really um, exciting with the introduction of our ReCheck product. Uh, ReCheck does a secondary search. So you use the same authorization, but you rerun the tools that you ran in underwriting anywhere from 30, 60, even 120 days later. And what that does is as claims are coming into play, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay with medical claims, you can see, did the person know they had a condition but deferred treatment or use that lag to then apply for insurance, get insurance, and then have some misrepresentation. So ReCheck is a great tool to give you that security to know the whole picture with the dates so you can compare that to how the application was filled out and really catch that misrepresentation way earlier in the process, A, to give you the, the comfort of knowing that you haven't missed anything, but also being able to have a better experience because you don't want to wait until a contestable claim and deny benefits. You'd be much rather to you know, work with that consumer, identify this misrep, clarify it, and remedy the situation way sooner in the process. What would you say is your most popular use case and your most impactful use case? You got to go with underwriting for prescription data, I and mean, it's really the original use case for it. I think the fact that we have you know mid 90, sometimes even 98% hit rates for the prescription data, um, depending on the population, um, but having that instantly available right at the beginning, so you can really quantify what did the person disclose, what risk do we think they're having. Um, underwriting is definitely the the big and most impactful use case for prescription data, but we do see it in contestable claims and other types of ex, uh, use cases as well. But underwriting for sure is is prescription data's best uh, value. Yep, I couldn't agree more. What about medical claims? What are you seeing that being used for, the medical data? 
Yeah, same thing. Uh, medical claims is really also helpful with underwriting because you can get that for their context and, and conf confirmation on the diagnosis that they're suffering from. So I think underwriting with medical claims is great. It, uh, it does help with claims assessment, any type of investigation and risk management, but for sure, got to go with underwriting again on that one. We have credit data as well that we layer in. What, do you, what are your thoughts on the credit data? Yeah, so credit data gets uh, sometimes confused because it's not a credit score and it's, it's only available in a risk score. So really, I think that does a great job with um, acceleration as well as some underwriting for some unintuitive cases. So what it can do is it can look at the whole risk of an individual, you know, not just their medical conditions that we have with prescription and medical data, but lifestyle type things of how many loans do they have? How are they managing their, their life and their financial business? And that's really helpful to give that holistic view for again, that diabetic example. Again, if you have a person with diabetes and they have really strong credit attributes, they're more likely to protect themselves from a risk management standpoint and health standpoint as well. There's a correlation there. And so I think it's really helpful when you're trying to figure out does this person qualify for accelerated underwriting you know how can we if we're not sure where this person fits in it's a great indicator to use in full underwriting but again i think in that new business acquisition and, and underwriting is, is where i'd say that comes into play perfect and then just rounding it all out what are your thoughts about the best use case for risk score 3.0 and the most popular use case yeah, so risk score is basically taking prescription data, medical data, and credit attributes and putting it through a predictive model. So just like the credit data and how that's used, it's really for that unintuitive cases and really helping further segment risk. So all of that new business acquisition, if you can put it through acceleration, or even just traditional underwriting, it really comes into play because it just gives you that confidence of what is the risk of this person from a mortality standpoint. And it's backed by our really um, strong mortality study with 42 million lives. So it's got a lot of credibility and it can, again, really give you that confidence that what we're seeing for this specific person is actually their risk. And I think that's something that's really exciting about our industry is that we can move to a underwrite by person, not a blanket age face amount decision. And so risk score really helps enable that, which has been really exciting. It really is exciting. And, you know, we hear a lot from underwriters about how do we best use different pieces of data? And then can you tell us a little bit about the different products that are out there? So I'm going to do something different. We're going to have a lightning round. I'm just going to throw questions out to you, at you and you let me know what your thoughts are. So, for instance, are you FCRA compliant? Absolutely. Um, FCRA is a huge part of our business. We are a consumer reporting agency. We have to protect this data. We give access to the consumers for the full information that we find. If in a very rare situation there has been data mismatch at the origination of the data, we work with them to uh, remedy that and then give the updated report to our customers. But absolutely, we're fully compliant. Perfect. And what is your turnaround time to retrieve the data? Is it within hours, days? So our, yeah, prescription data, medical data, and risk score are all done within seconds. So it's very much instantaneous. Uh, we do have some de-identified tools and risk scoring that's more minutes instead of seconds. Um, but all of our tools we consider real time and really bringing real value right at the point of sale. Do you have nationwide coverage? And does your hit rate vary by region and demographic? Yeah, all of our data sources are national, um, so we see slight variations based on socioeconomic status in terms of who has access to care. So there's ranges for everything, but our prescription data, for example, is, you know, 90 to 98 uh, percent age, gender and, and location factor in. Uh, medical data has grown a lot this year, so we're actually averaging 70 percent hit rates with some even getting up into the mid 70s. Uh, we still see some people experiencing 65 percent hit rates, but again, a really great range there. Um, and then credit is 98% access as well. So it's very, very broad coverage. And can you use your product to stratify risk within different medical conditions? Absolutely, especially when you use them in combination. It's really powerful. I, I, I keep coming back to that diabetes example because, again, you could see that the person might admit to diabetes. We can see a prescription on their report, but that doesn't tell the whole story. So when you layer in the medical data where you, again, can show that they have how they've been treated and is it going up? Is it going down? Is it stable? And then you layer in the risk score that gives that holistic view of how well are they going to sustain the maintenance of that condition. It really lets you make different decisions for all the different diabetics based on their scores and their data coming back so they can have the best rate for them. Perfect, perfect. And one final question for the lightning round. How frequently do you refresh and update your risk scores? 
So the risk scores are something that we're constantly looking at. We really pride ourselves with our mortality studies. Um, it's a big lift to, to do a mortality study and to update the risk scores. So typically it's about annual updates. Um, occasionally we'll have new conditions show up or new things that we'll want to do and do some iterative updates. So it's not very um, prescriptive, but for sure they're, they're constantly being worked on and, and doing major refreshes um, at least every year or every other year. Perfect. And I know that a lot of concern has been around what are we going to miss if we don't get, say, traditional insurance labs and exams. So some of the, the questions are how do we know we can get tobacco use or build or blood pressure? How frequently are you seeing that within your data set? Yeah, it's been really exciting. As medical data hit rates have increased, we've been really seeing more of a match to the incidence rate for the general population. So we're seeing on average, you know, 12 to 15 percent tobacco indications coming back through our medical claims data. Same thing with build. It's not always just a BMI, but you could see the diagnosis for obesity or high blood pressure or different things like that. And so that's averaging about 30 percent in its prevalence rate coming back through the data, which, again, I think is really impactful and really helpful to give that confidence. And sometimes even in the doctor's notes and in the, the medical data, we do get specificity like the BMI and actual uh, readings, which is really helpful. So you guys offer, like I said, an impressive and large suite of products for our underwriters. Um, so where do you see the industry going in the next three to five years, and, and how does Milliman envision supporting it? Yeah, Milliman really wants to continue to earn that right to be the partner that brings all electronic data and the key interpretation of that. So I think we're going to see more automation. You know, I think instant data is going to be really powerful. Obviously, there's been a lot of buzz about electronic health records um, for probably a decade, um, but we actually see it actually coming to more utilization um, more recently, and I think it, that's definitely the future. Uh, we just made an acquisition of one record, um, a company that participates in electronic data acquisition across the health space so that we can also aggregate that data and help bring interpretation because we do think that having all of the information is going to be the most uh, impactful so we don't have to worry about missing anything. Perfect, perfect. All right, final time question. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Tell us everything you think the audience needs to know about Millman. Yeah, I think the most important thing I want people to know about Millman is that we the people matter. Our internal people, our clients, our partners, our data sources, really putting people first, I think, has been a huge part of who we are and how we've been able to develop tools that work for people. Um, I think we have been very proud of the type of people we have. I think we have really talented um, people. So not only are they good humans that are great to work with, but they're very skilled. And I think that makes a great partnership for the industry. And then again, I think because we have great people doing great things with great skills, we have great products and solutions. And we're willing to always innovate and always do what the clients need us to do. And I think never resting on six, you know, previous success or things like that. We're always looking to bring those next uh, solutions to market in partnership with our clients using the great people that we have internally. Awesome. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much, Angela. It's been great talking to you and learning a little bit more about Milliman and your products. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it.